here in Boston on the day after. And maybe the most striking thing about this city, the day after the bombings, is not just that Boston is rising up. Of course it is. It's a great American city. But that it is doing so under a kind of armed guard. The police presence here is very strong on the streets. In fact, several blocks behind me there where the finishing line of the Boston Marathon was where those bombs went off. They're still blocked off. It's an active crime scene back there. And the presence of the uniformed military personnel patrolling the streets of a great American city, it's a different feel here. But for most people here and around the country, it was the emotions today. Flags at half staff and here in Boston mourning the dead, supporting the survivors, celebrating those life-saving heroes who did so much. They are the focus now, the three dead, eight-year-old Martin Richard, a little boy who loved baseball, was at the finish line to cheer on the runners with his family. 29-year-old Crystal Campbell, a steakhouse manager who everyone said gave so much of herself to others, and a Chinese graduate student here in Boston whose family has asked that her name remain private. They're the focus as well as the investigation into who killed them. And for that, ABC's Brian Ross, chief investigative correspondent, joins us. Brian, what do they know? Well, good evening, Terry. Right now, this is an investigation with great urgency because whoever did it is still at large and it's not known whether more attacks are planned. But today, there was a great breakthrough. According to the FBI, they have recovered the partial mangled remains of one of the bombs that did not fully explode. And it turns out it's made of a common kitchen item a pressure cooker. In fact, this exact model, which we bought for $140 tonight, about a half mile from here. But as a bomb, it was packed with wires, an electronic circuit board, uh, tiny ball bearings and nails, all designed to maim and kill and give maximum damage to its victims. This is what remains of the pressure cooker, turned into a homemade bomb, seen in this FBI crime lab photo obtained by ABC News. It was hidden in a black backpack. What's left of it seen in this photo. The simple bombs were responsible for 12 seconds of horror. Cell phone footage shot by a spectator between the two explosions. I have a victim here with shrapnel in the way. Need another ambulance down here at 755 Boylston. They're on the way, sir. They're on the way. Uh, I want all the SWAT team to go back to the base right now and get their rifles, get their gear. Authorities are going through race day videos frame by frame. Here, the white smoke seen after the detonation indicates a bomb built with low velocity explosive mixtures, not the more powerful military grade. They may not have had the resources as we've seen in other bomb attacks, but they knew how to make the bomb go boom. Experts say the large pieces of metal as seen here in the air, suggest the bombs might have been concealed in or under a mailbox or trash barrel as one witness described. I literally saw the garbage barrel explode. And I saw the flash, the fire, the smoke, and I just ran as fast as I could. As federal agents and police continued to look for the tiniest of clues Tuesday at the crime scene, officials said they had learned a lot about the nature of the pressure cooker bomb. They have a timer device on them. It, it appears that um, this device may have been dropped uh, in a backpack, either inside the trash cans or out, right outside the trash cans. Counterterrorism officials have been warning about the threat of the readily available pressure cookers for years. In 2010, the failed Times Square bomber tried to use one. An Al-Qaeda internet site even provides a step-by-step -step manual on how to build a pressure cooker bomb. And this demonstration video from Nepal News shows their potential power. We find that the pressure cooker bombs are used quite extensively uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, so, in other words, this is a very similar device uh, to the IEDs that we have found uh, throughout uh, uh, Afghanistan used to kill our, our soldiers. Law enforcement officials say there is still no solid evidence that links the marathon bombs to Al-Qaeda or to anyone else. But Tuesday, there was a new plea for help in trying to identify the bomber. Any individual who expressed a desire to target the marathon suspicious interest in researching how to create explosive devices, the noise of explosions in remote areas prior to yesterday, which may have been used as tests by those responsible for these acts, someone who appeared to be carrying an unusually heavy, dark-colored bag yesterday around the time of the blasts and in the vicinity of the blasts. The efforts to learn who is behind a bombing often require great patience and persistence. 
It took three years, and only after the discovery of a tiny electronic part, that authorities learned who was behind the bomb that brought down Pan Am Flight 103. The so-called Unabomber was at large for some 17 years, hiding out in the mountains of Montana in a cabin before a relative finally turned him in. In Oklahoma City, authorities got lucky in a few days tracing the debris of the truck bomb and its axle to the rental firm and then to bomber Timothy McVeigh. What are you looking for around here? Well, actually, they're going to try to capture everything they possibly uh, can think will be tied to the explosive device itself. Mike Sullivan, the former head of the ATF, the federal agency that investigates bombings, gave me some insight Tuesday near the Boston crime scene. Even the smallest piece of um, evidence that we would look at and would simply walk over, they would capture and say that's a treasure trove for them. Even a little piece like that. Yeah, critically important. You know, it could be that one piece that might tell them exactly how the, uh, the device was detonated. And that might be the only piece that's left. As Boston remained a city in grief Tuesday with a 15-block crime scene at its center, President Obama vowed those responsible would be caught and brought to justice. What we don't yet know is who carried out this attack or why, whether it was planned and executed by a terrorist organization, foreign or domestic, or was the act of a malevolent individual. But we will find out. We will find whoever harmed our citizens and we will bring them to justice. A lot of questions, obviously, the beginning of a major investigation. And Brian, as if this wasn't enough, there is today what might be, what appears to be, another terror scare. This one in Washington. What's going uh, on? A kind of scare. A suspicious letter sent to Mississippi Senator Roger um, Wicker, and it had a white granular substance. Two field tests indicated it was a ricin, a highly poisonous substance. Now, those field tests are notoriously inaccurate and the material has been sent to a lab to do a full test and we'll know the results sometime tomorrow. But could certainly shake up the delivery of mail in, in, well, at the Senate. Well, it's certainly shaken up the delivery of mail. At this point, there's no indication at all that's connected to what's been happening here. Okay, Brian Ross, thanks very much for that and for the report on the bombing.